we kind of designed this study for uh, determining uh, nutrient requirements for pregnancy. So in that model, in that study, we did have uh, open or not pregnant and pregnant cows, and we harvest cows over uh, the gestation periods in four time points over the gestation periods. So with that, we could determine the rate of deposit or how is protein being deposited in the body and in the, all the gestational components over time or over the gestation days. Hi, I'm Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Uh, my guest today is Dr. Marcos Maconis. Uh, Marcos is a, is a native Brazilian. I, I met him a few years ago when I was down there. He's uh, currently a professor at Washington State University out of Pullman, uh, doing research, uh, a professor of dairy nutrition and management, and he does research on nutritional effects on uh, sustainability and environmental impact. Marcos, welcome, welcome to the Black Belt. Thank you, Bill. I'm glad to be here. Glad to see you again. You're, you wrote a paper last year, actually, in Journal Dairy Science on protein requirements of gestating uh, dairy cows, and, and nutrient requirements are a great interest of mine. We have a few, the NASM just came out a few years ago. It has a, a gestation model. The European systems have gestation models. So I guess to start off what with the model you did, how did you come up with the data, and how does it match not in not quantitatively but how similar or dissimilar is it to the other systems yeah we uh ran a study with we kind of designed this study for uh, determining uh nutrient requirements for pregnancy so in that model in that study we did have uh open or not pregnant and pregnant cows and we harvest cows over uh the gestation periods in four time points over the gestation periods so with that, we could determine the rate of deposit or how is protein being deposited in the body and in the, all the gestational components over time or over the gestation days. Um, and, and based on your second question, how comparable it is, um, as you study more and more nutrient requirements, you understand that the, it's, uh, the, the organism is basically a protein or energy deposition. And as long as that is similar uh, among breeds, it is very comparable. And as far as the data we have, both on this study and on our data for requirements for cats, the body composition of a young calf from crossbreds or hosting animals, those are uh, hosting gear crossbreds. Uh, and the, the body composition of those animals don't change a lot. Actually, every time we tried to compare them, we didn't find a, a statistical significance. So I do believe that they are quite comparable um, uh, among systems. So, so basically, this is looking at accretion of nitrogen in both the fetus and associated tissue. Yeah. When, when did you start with in the gest stage of what stage of gestation did you use your first data points? Yeah, one forty was the first harvest with the gestation animals. We did harvest an animal at the beginning of the trial when we inseminated, technically inseminated, so as a reference animal, so we had like the point zero, and then we had four time points at every 30 days. So we have 140, 170, uh, 210, 140, no, yeah, one for, no, five time points, 140, 170, 210, 240, and 270. We have five time yeah. points, so we could trace over time how uh, protein was deposited in all those gestational components. Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M, the best in-class rumen-protected methionine product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from their components, and maintain the lifetime performance of their herds. For more product information and to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids, go to MilkPay.com. And I assume it's kind of exponential, like fetal growth in general. Yeah. When, when does it start becoming a, a significant requirement? That's an excellent question because uh, in the last NRC, they used, uh, I think, 190 days, 190 days. And the current NRC, and, and our, uh, NASEM uses, I think, 12 or 13 days. Yeah. So what we did is we fit that, uh, that uh, net deposit of protein 
over time. And then we base on the how, how the statistical difference between that curve and zero, like the the axis uh, axis the x axis, we determine around 140, 140 days the moment where that is statistically different from zero. Okay. That's what we found in our study, which is different from the other system. Every system has a different. I know, you know, NASM starts early, but it's really until you get out to 150, 170 days, it's a it's a pretty small requirement can, compared to the lactation requirement uh, at that time. Yeah. Do you use an MP system or in, in, in a metabolizable protein or a net protein system or both? Yeah, we kind of use both for the for the gestational requirements. We use the NP. So we basically estimate the net protein requirements and then we estimated an efficiency of use of gestation uh, to determine the mp uh, that's for gestational components in that same paper for maintenance requirements we estimated that directly into mp uh, because we didn't have the data to estimate the mp uh, but for gestational components we use the mp divided by the efficiency which will give you the mp value, the metabolizable protein requirements. When we were doing NASM, one of the hardest things was this efficiency for gestation efficiency. And you, mm -hmm. you look in the literature, it goes all over the board. I mean, huge, huge variances. All right. how, how does your, from, from very low 15% up to 60% or so, how, how does your efficiency calc go in that range? Or is it different yet and not one more number yeah and we we did estimate that efficiency using what we call an interactive model as we had the model set up to determine all the requirements so we determined protein uh protein for maintenance for gain in for the station the same model we kind of calculated the the uh, efficiency based on the data that will minimize our residues in the model and we our value is around 65 or 63 percent our value uh i have it here 62.5 percent okay um and our justification so it's pretty high it's higher i, I remember that in nason uh you uh discussed that you didn't have enough data to support changing the 33 35 percent that you had uh, in the nrc 2001 but the beef NRC uses something around 65%, if I'm not mistaken. And if you calculate the, the INRA in system is a little different how they calculate requirements, but what they consider something that will be the same as our uh, KPREG or KGES, uh, they have around something around 72.5%. 70, so we thought that the, our system um, was kind of, uh, how can I say, uh, well supported because our numbers match some of the other recent publications, which will be the Nason uh, beef cattle and the INRA system. So yeah, so in our case, we, and also we have now uh, diets that are much better adjusted for protein and in, and, and as much as we can, right, with RDP, RUP, and at least uh, some amino acids, that will also justify a little higher efficiency. I guess that leads into my, my last question. Is your system, can it be modified to do amino acids, or, or is it stuck with the protein basis? That's an excellent question. I think from the net uh requirements yes because that's on the body that is independent from the diet for converting from the nets to the um, metabolizable amino acids or amino acids absorbed in the small intestine i think that requires a little uh, more uh, deep investigation there's so many transformations and the placenta uses so much amino acids for energy and not for protein mm -hmm. So we have to be extremely careful regarding converting that net into metabolizable. That will probably show up in the lower efficiency. That will change the efficiency. Actually, that was one of the justifications for why the, the efficiency for gestation was lower uh, in proteins is because they, they don't use that for protein deposition. Um, but at this point, we cannot say because there are so, so many transformations in amino acid profiles. The body itself can convert several of those amino acids. So at this point, I don't think our model will fit the metabolizable or the, the amino acids absorbed in the intestine. For the net, yes, 
but the net doesn't give us uh, a lot of information regarding how much we should feed. Uh, thanks. This is just, I guess there's a whole lot more research left yet to do. So job security. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you, Bill. It has been a pleasure.